last speaker, Ms. Maria Ressa. First of all, thank you so much. I know we ran an hour late, and I won't uh, take up too much of your time, but hopefully pull everything together. The last part I loved because we came up with solutions, right? And it takes more than one person. If the idea before was one person can create something, this is kind of the idea of social media, right? You can spark something. Well, now the idea is to solve the problems that we have, one person isn't enough. And one of the things I loved about the huddles is that you had groups of us coming together to try to find solutions. As many of you know, we've done the Social Good Summit for a while, and we've told you the problems. The problems are here, and I'm gonna add a little bit more to the problems from what you've heard. Uh, but this, I'm gonna add my voice to Andrew talking about Chernobyl. Because I think more than at any other time in the time I've worked as a journalist, I have never felt at the edge of a precipice. And that's not just, not just because I'm facing 63 years in prison, as Amal Clooney told me. She's scared that she step back. <laughs> but that's kind of, I think, our world is at a precipice. And you've heard the two main agenda of Rappler, which is the breakdown of our world, climate change, sustainable future, Plastics is only the beginning of it, right? Climate, we, we did that with Agos from the very beginning. You want to be able to breathe our air, our land, our water. That's huge, it's existential. Simultaneously, we're looking, I won't go closer now, sige, dito na lang daw. We're really looking over the edge in terms of the second battle, which is the battle for truth. And in that battle, uh, I really am looking at the precipice in that battle, right? Because we've decided to stand for our values. Um, let me throw a few more ideas from everything that you have heard, and I'll take this, this battle for truth. At the end of last year, when Time Magazine named Rappler, named us the gar one of the guardians of truth, right? We realized this problem is global. And you heard that. Part of the reason we brought Andrew Keane here to tell you about it is because in 2013, we brought him in because we believed so much that social media is for social good. And we wanted to have a contrarian but we thought we were right, that social media really is for social good. In 2016, when someone asked me, right before, during the campaigns, someone actually asked me, Maria, do you think dictatorship can come back to the Philippines? I said, no way, we have social media. Well, of course now we've seen social media used to propagate lies where social media is, where you say a lie a million times, it becomes truth, right? So let me, if you haven't seen this, this is the, the big chunk of, I think, where I want you to think about the root and scale of both of these problems. Climate change, you know. Uh, I just came from Singapore where the air was choked with haze. Cebu is choked with haze coming in from forest fires in Indonesia. This is a story I first started doing in the 80s. In the 90s, it hit a huge, we thought, tipping point. Wala pa rin. Okay, let me, let me go back to disinformation and the battle for truth. The root and scale of the problems. Because what we've seen is that information is power, right? The problem is that if you don't have the information, if you don't have the facts, then how can we have a democracy? If you don't have facts, you don't have truth. If you don't have truth, 
you don't have trust. And that's where trust does come in. If you don't have any of those, where's the public space? Where is democracy? If we don't do something significant, and I don't mean just us individually, us Filipinos, I mean us globally. Democracy as we know it is dead, right? And part of that is because Andrew talked about algorithms. The way the algorithms work is to segment us, to tear apart the public space, and to actually subvert your will. You don't even know you're being manipulated and being pushed to do something by power or money. Those are the two things, because it's for sale, right, in those public platforms. Uh, um, one of you, the guys on Twitter said, data is the new oil. We'll go one step further to go with Andrew Chernobyl. Data is not the new oil, it is plutonium. And two people said that recently. One is the Cambridge Analytica whistleblower, Christopher Wiley. You, you know him, the guy with hair who basically, who basically Cambridge Analytica came in and Wiley said that the Philippines, the country which, which spends the most time on social media globally four years in a row, that we were the, his word was petri dish, where they tested tactics of disinformation, and then, when it worked, ported it to the West. So they tested on us. So it's not a surprise that the country with the largest compromised accounts on Facebook during Cambridge Analytica was the United States. The second country with the most compromised accounts, and you should check, because some of my friends' Facebook accounts were compromised. The second country was the Philippines. Right? So they tested here and then, and then brought it to the West. The dynamics of this algorithm economy is set up to structurally undermine the human will. So data is the new plutonium. Wiley was the first person who compared data to radioactive matter. And the second person who said that was a guy named Jim Balsali. He's the co-founder of BlackBerry. He said that it is so dangerous that we need to come together globally. And I guess when we look at solutions, that's where it winds up. I, I'm gonna throw one last thing at you, which is this. The online advertisement-driven business model, and you heard that in this very interesting panel. Um, this model is actually, it saps your choice. Again, you don't know you're being manipulated, but we're being manipulated. It represents a foundational threat, not just to markets, to businesses, because you're for sale, your data is for sale, and when artificial intelligence starts to take all your choices, it can predict where you're headed, what you will want, what sneaker you want. So it's a, it's a foundational problem for markets, for election integrity and democracy, right? So, and dami, di ba? Sorry, I, I wanted to just leave you with these things as thought-provoking. And if you look on my Twitter feed, it's at Maria Ressa. Let's, let's show this photo, because I love this graphic. It's by the international, uh, this is, the fangs are Facebook likes. It's from the Center for International Governance Innovation. And look at that. This illustration actually is kind of what, what these technology platforms have done. They're the accelerant that used the worst of human nature to manipulate us. So let's, can you go to the article? This is the Center for International Governance Initiative. When you look at the article, you'll see the rest of almost everything I've said 
everything you've heard on the stage today, they come together in terms of why we need to take action now and what kind of action we need to take, right? Uh, the title is Facebook Broke Democracy in Many Countries Around the World, including in mine. And I'm not saying that because social media helped President Duterte win. I'm glad President Duterte used social media and he won. What I'm not glad about is the weaponization of social media where you manipulate it and you have lies masquerading as facts. The second thing is impunity should be stopped, right? So that's part of what's there. You click through to my Twitter feed, you'll see the rest of it. I'll leave you with this last thought. What do we do? Because it's not all bad, promise. The good part of this is that we're standing on the edge of the precipice. Everything you do now to help find a solution will matter. What you think matters because this is a completely new world. Our world is facing an existential choice. Are we going to choose life and will or are we going to step off the precipice? I know this firsthand because by standing up for the values I believe in, that includes Rappler, right? The values, the standards and ethics of journalism, the value of freedom of speech, of choice, of truth. Um, I've truly had to face, uh, let me think, starting in 2018, January 2018, Rappler and I have faced 11 cases and investigations. In a three month period, I've had to post bail eight times. And in a five week period, I was arrested twice. I don't recommend it. Uh, and I was detained once. Despite that, all is good. Because the fight is important and the fight continues. And your voice, your actions, matter at this existential moment. So on behalf of Rappler, I want to thank you for spending the day with us. It's been so long, you guys. Thank you so much, Rapplers. Thank you.